There we go. Um, yeah, I guess you're talking about the Universal which and Argentina, which will bring me to, I guess, back to the first question, in a sense, like, art is, uh, it's be, writing is just being, it's a craft. You know, you build a table, this is a table that holds our water, it doesn't fall over. If you build an unbelievably beautiful table, then people will, you know, pass it down for generations or end up, in the, there's a line between craft and art, and I think if a story's working, it's universal. So I have really no concern, I mean, I don't, even though it makes people crazy, consider myself a Jewish writer. I, I grew up with a Jewish worldview. That is the way, I grew up in a world where there were only Jews and only Orthodox Jews, and that was the whole universe. I didn't see conservative or reform, and definitely not, ju there was just other, and that, that was a complete universe. And that idea that I should think that I'm writing about, it's almost, it comes from a place of respect in a sense. If a man walks into the room and I say a Jewish man walks into the room, that doesn't make sense. That's how I think a man should be. You know, to qualify, Jewish. that, yes, why is that some other form of manhood that I should think he's not regular? That's somebody else telling me, how to think. So I told the story about Argentina that their Jews is of no, can, that's how people are as far as I'm concerned. You know, so, <laughs> you know, and, and that, yeah, I just think that's it. But, but, but the fact idea it better be a story about, you know, I was talking to someone from, you know, again, the nice thing about uh, my very fortunate life is you get to, you put books out there and then you get, you know, the history comes back to you. Like one of the families I most dreamed about central to this story, you know, I got to meet, you know, my whole book's about the search for family. There's somebody who searched for one of the most famous disappeared, and I got to sit and have dinner with him. It's a different read for the Germans, you know, and that's a different interaction with Jews, and I don't know, I just think things better have a universal form. I mean, I guess you, we keep, I feel like a lot of the questions touch on as if we're discussing the future of literature, like what needs to be done, and I feel like really nothing needs to be done. If it's supposed to die, it should die. You know, like, no, seriously, the photograph did not kill the painting, and the film did not kill the photograph. What film with sound killed was the silent film because it became a moot form. So I just, you know, if you compare it with <coughs> saying Wikipedia, is that going to affect fiction? It's just two different things. It's not even a comparison. In a sense, if you take all the arts and all the time everybody in the whole world dedicates to art in the same day, it will be dwarfed by the amount of time they dedicate to pornography on the internet. But we're not going to say, is pornography going to replace all the art forms? Because it's, <laughs> no, it's dramatized sex. It's, it's an, you know, it's, it's created, so, so that idea, I don't feel like it's a, like if reading, I believe that it's the supreme form, like this, this goes back to the Argentina thing and the universal, like the minute the pyramids are no good in Cairo, they'll make it into a mall and they'll, you know, but they stay, <laughs> they stay relevant. And that's what I was looking at in this book, you know, in a sense it's about the relevance of literature, because when governments go bad, we might worry, here we are talking, is literature gonna have a future? But I tell you, like in Argentina in 1976, when a government turns fascistic, when it turns totalitarianism, they go after the writers for their top of the list because I think when evil is involved, they know the power of but literature. But do you think that will also happen today or in the future? That, that's what happened in the past. Right. When, when writers uh, shaped our lives and our opinions, they were the first ones to go. Yeah, and, and, and <laughs> that's the place it holds. I think it still holds that way. I mean, there's, you know, there's, right in China, there's writers all over. So the world, if so. we all agree that, your, Nobody can all your agree in Jerusalem. In <laughs> <laughs> if we agree that all of you, uh, if, whether you want it or not, this is, this is your part in, in human society to, to shape us. But I, I think that's too bad. I think that would be like any writer who thought that his or herself would already be so corrupted that their writing would be of no value. <laughs> no, in a sincere manner. Like I think the writer's obligation is only to story. Like it's very nice if you get, you know, I can't believe I'm sitting up here. We're sitting up here facing, it's a very, it, it, it's an honor, but that's, it's not, it can't be of the writer's concern, I believe, in a really deep way. The obligation is to, to story alone, that, that's it. But Naim said that, uh, that writers, at least in the past, had some kind of vision, some kind of ideology. Uh, they wanted to change something. Uh, I know that early in his use, uh, not only in his words, but in his doings, uh, in his in protesting. Yeah, oh, I get you, but it can't be a it can't be a position. If I want everyone to drink Coke, not Pepsi, that's a corrupting thing. It's what Nicole said. Writers want to do something, you know. It's recreate the novel or make a new story. You know, you, you, my book maybe is very political in the end, or very Jewish in the end. But those aren't my concern. Was you know, Kaddish and Lillian, the mother, the father, and the son. It's the story. That other stuff better be in there because anytime you create a reality, it better be, you know, any world you build is going to have these aspects you're not aware of, because that's what a, a world is, it has to be faceted. I
heard a bell. Yeah. Thank you. So. <laughs>